you're doing. Let's see about what happens with regular watercolors if you are painting this at home. I'm just using some regular colors, and this is a white web that I drew with the white crayon. And I'm just going to make my different colors in my different sections. This would also be really nice if you did this with colored pencil or just filled it in with crayon colors. So this is a fun way to do this project if you're not using the tissue paper. It works the same way. So if you did a color web, you see that as you're blending your colors together, I'm going to put some green and blue in here together. It's not sticking to any of the crayon, no matter what color it is. So this would be a fun time to add colors in your, if you're using watercolors at home. And also, don't forget that you can do, if you're at home and you have markers, you can do that plastic bag effect that comes out really, really beautiful. Um, so you can fill in separate colors in your web section to um, show these uh, as different sections of your web, or just going ahead and go across it and blend your colors in together, kind of like what the tissue paper is doing, where it just says, you know, I'm going to spread color no matter what's going on. So if you want to, this is a great time to blend your colors together and experiment. But if you're doing this at home with watercolor, be very, very careful with black. Um, the way that they make the black paints that we use and black crayons and things, it's very, very dark and it dominates the other colors. So just like brown, um, you know, you can lose your color pretty quickly and pretty easily. So just make sure that if you are doing this at home with markers or paints, that you decide where you want your colors to be. And um, do you want to blend them? I've got kind of a yellow and a green there together going on. Do you want to try to make each section a separate color? I mean, I'm just demonstrating. Yours does not have to look like mine. You could do something very, very different from what I have going on here. And I'm just sort of playing around with my colors. And I just want to make sure that if I'm doing this at home, that I keep rinsing my brush before I change colors. If Because um, you just need plain water. If you don't rinse your brush out, then you're going to keep getting more and more and more color on your brush and everything will turn muddy or brown or uh, probably some kind of a blend that you're not crazy about. So just like with the tissue paper, it's good to get lots of color in there and it's okay to get it very, very, very wet. This one doesn't have a spider on it this time because that spider is up to you if you want to do that. So the more paint you have on your brush, the more vibrant the colors are, like this here, that would be adding purple, very, very, very uh, little water on the brush. The brush is almost like, dry. But then when I add a lot of water on there and add in some purple, you can see it thins out. Now the only trouble with doing this, if you use the thick paper like we're going to use in school, is it dries quickly. You may not be able to do that all in one shot. Um, you may need to come back and wait until your paper is dry and add some more color to it. Just make sure if you're going to add more color, that you're not adding a whole lot more water. So um, depending on what you're going for, do you want to have each color be different? Do you want to blend in colors like I'm doing here just for fun? But it makes for a beautiful painting. And um, we'll see what the other one looks like. So uh, if you're just using crayons at home, color it in whatever way that you like and um, make it look as fun as you want and draw as many spiders on there as you like. And here is our spider web on the next day. I was able to move mine without disturbing too many of the squares, but as you can see, they just come right off. So let me just do that. Now you want to be careful taking these off and try not to let them go everywhere. You want to go ahead and tidy them up and throw them away. Now this is nice and bright because I added lots and lots of water. When we're dealing with this thick paper that is better for things like um, getting things wet, like particularly with markers, um, it does a really great job on holding things together. And as you can see, it got to the back, but it did not stain the tabletop. So it's nice to have it. This is just regular cardstock that you pick up at Walmart or uh, 
an office supply store, sometimes even grocery stores have it. So it's good to have, it's a little pricey, but you can see it turn out really well. If you get them really close, you can see it did not touch any of my white crayon. Now, if I'd made my white crayon thicker, like I did on the watercolor example, it would have shown up more. But, you know, sometimes we don't want to do something that's different. It's hard to draw in white on a white surface. So if it were colored cardstock, it might be a little bit more interesting. But um, that's when it starts getting expensive. If you're doing this at home and you did it on regular paper and you got it wet using the marker method or um, uh, watercolors, don't worry about it. Put it under a heavy book and just leave it alone for a while and um, it should flatten back out and look terrific. Um, whenever you do anything wet, if you can put it where it needs to sit and dry, you'll get a better result and it won't be as wrinkly, but don't panic. Just flatten it and it'll come out terrific. So I can't wait to see what you guys create. Uh, make sure that you use lots of bright color and uh, you can uh, color it any way that you like and we'll see what you have. I'm starting to put stuff up on my website. I'd love to see your creations. Don't forget to send them to me. Have a great time with your project.